That ain't gonna work. Six thirty six. 751-1041 is the phone number. Welcome back to the John Justice Show, live from the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas for Americans for Prosperity, the Ride Online convention going on this weekend. Good morning, President for Institute for Liberty, Andrew Langer. How are you doing, John? I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. You know I'm in Vegas. How, how bad can I be? Apart from not getting a, a great night's sleep last night? I just never sleep well in hotels and, and uh, made the... Uh, uh, made the the tragic error of going to Casino Royale. For those of you who don't know, Casino Royale is a is a an old school Vegas casino situated between the Venetian and Bally's, and it is if you if you're familiar with Patton Oswalt's KFC Famous Bowls rant, which is a you know a a bowl of despair smothered <laughs> in flavor sauce. Yeah, that's essentially what Casino Royale is. You know, you go in and I brought Andrew in there because he wanted to learn how to play craps. Right, and you can it's a it was a minimum of five dollars a, yeah. a bet. Uh, and, and that's your game. Yeah, I, love I don't even craps. know if you put a craps table in front of me, I I wouldn't know what well, I would I would solve, I wouldn't even know what it was. We're gonna solve that problem tonight. But no, I, I, I yes, I'm done. done. And and, and done. so yeah. you know, it's it's just it's it's like that scene out of uh, Vegas Vacation where he goes to the casino where they have like guess what number I'm banking right. and they have, and it's just it's you got guys who are serious local gamers uh, who who <laughs> are they don't take any nonsense from anybody. And but they're but they're you know they don't bet major amounts so I, I don't know just the sort of the, the general sentiment around the table was <sighs> yeah and so I was down oh not all that much because again you're only you're only betting five bucks at a time but it, it just was like I, I said to Andrew as I walked I said I can you know he he was out and he wanted to go or he was going to come up I said I'll walk back I can lose I can lose money at the Venetian just as easily like, sure. I can lose money here and it would be a lot more fun to lose at the Venetian well I, as, a, as an example we went to the uh, we went to the to the Bellagio to the buffet and there was a huge it was like a mm-hmm. Disneyland queue line for the buffet and I remember standing there in the line going man this ride <laughs> better be good and then I went oh okay now I can make this ride good yes. you know and it, it's it, I love the buffets because you can Rarely do you have the opportunity to put that much, and I, and I don't do a lot on the diversity side of yeah. things, but put that much diversity sure. on one plate. Listen, for, I, could, I could smother my shrimp in turkey gravy. Yes, perfect. the steak, from steak to, uh, to pineapple pizza to pesto pots, uh, pasta to uh, sushi, um, it was is, to, uh, to cheesecake. Yes. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was full. But walking back, getting yeah, back that was to, a little hard. Getting back to what you were saying, um, as an example of the pit of despair that you went to, um, they went in, and I just kept walking yeah, right by. That's exactly right. I went right back to the room. John saw where this ride was going. It, 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 walking around though last night, and I mentioned this at the start of the show. Um, I love Vegas because we're surrounded by so, uh, especially right now. And I don't know if it's if this is a if this is a a, a shark year moment where it's it's always been like this, and we're just we have a heightened awareness to it, or if this really is a new era of government control, whether mm-hmm. it's attempts to ban sodas or the popcorn. Yes. There was one this morning out of New York where there was a certain township that was looking to fine people based off of what their yards were looking yeah, like. No, right. That's, that's, so, actually, I wonder if that was my hometown. I, I, had to, I had to look that up. So I got the story. We'll bring yeah. it up a little bit later on. But, you know, so you have all that, and then you come to Las Vegas, which, yes. is, which is the... Everything is heightened reality. Everything is bigger. Everything is 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 brighter. Mm-hmm. And and you want the epitome of of you know personal responsibility. Yes. It's it's here. Absolutely, that's very true. You know, but it's but it's interesting to me because we're walking down the street and and I and I love it. Yep. Especially just the uh, the the comparison of the two of what we're dealing with um, in terms of that government intervention and then just being able to go and make your own decisions. Um, but at the same time, because it's Vegas, it's heightened to the point where. There is that excess there, yes. you know, as you're walking down the street and it's lined with individuals with the with these T-shirts of, hey, you could yes. have a lady uh, right now, and they have the cards out, and so I'm going, okay, I like the free market capitalism, I like the personal responsibility, but there also is this ugly underbe- sure. underbelly of it as well. So I just well, all right, but which part is the ugly underbelly? Is it the is it the prostitution that's sort of semi legal, or is it the fact that you've got these sort of semi legal workers who are the guys who are sort of hoofing it, handing this stuff out. I mean, because to me, the more depressing part of it is these 
poor guys. I mean, listen, Lord love them. They're they're doing this right. and they're making money at it. But you know, the guys who have to stand out there all day, either handing out the prostitution cards or dressed as Buzz Lightyear or the you know junior size Bumblebee from the Transformers, <laughs> right? right. Um, <laughs> which we decided we could only, he could only transform into a go kart. Yeah, he was very small. It was yes. not. It was a Bumblebee, but, and it was he was very tiny. Yeah, I, you know, I think you 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 get you get what you're what you're going to get in this. I mean, really, the whole point is you know we were sort of discussing over dinner. The, libertarianism in America, you really have to let those folks make those choices. And yes, right. there are choices that you yourself would not make, um, but, you know, other folks might make those. Now, why they would do that, you know, here in Vegas, why, I, I just, I, I get the sense that if you take one of those cards right. and you're going to have some, you know, 500, uh, I'm sorry, there are men who like large, women of larger cards. Sure. You will have, you will have, um, uh, Ann Ramsey from uh, Throw Mama from the Train. <laughs> she looked like she looked like uh, uh, Ann Bancroft circa nineteen you know sixty five. Or you on the card, but she looked like Ann Ramsey circa. I was probably thinking about anywhere. this way too much because we're walking down the street, and literally, there, I mean, every you know every fifteen twenty feet, there's yes. somebody there ready to hand you a card if you want a lady of the night. And and I, as we're as we're walking down the street, I'm thinking to myself, now I would never do this, okay? But there's got to be a more efficient way. Yeah, and I'm thinking, I'm like, can they not have the girls out here with them? There's probably apparently they can't. Well, except for that cop that we saw, right? But this, but the, as a cop. but that opened up the door of, okay, are there t- if if you're going to go that far and to allow this type of of business take place, are there too many restrictions on it if you're already allowing it that are putting these businesses in the position where they have to hire cheaply these individuals to go and hand out these cards? If you actually strip that away. Would it class it up doing that thing with my fingers a little bit? I you know, there was this whole war on this on the internet, and they crack. And maybe this is the end result of them cracking down on Craigslist and Backpage and places like that. That's right. So, you know, it's it, it for, sort of forces it out there. Where do you fall though when you look at when you look at the excess of Vegas? And again, <laughs> you, <laughs> so where do you find? No, 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 not no, not on prostitution, not on prostitution. <laughs> where do I fall? But, but I just mean in terms of you know you 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 is it is Vegas. Would you see a scenario where if we went through and just started dropping the regulations, all right? Yeah. We started really scaling back the government, and we started really opening up uh, the cities um, and allowing them to... Because I think Tucson would do well to allow some gambling. If we had a Casino del Sol in the downtown area of Tucson, yes. I think it would be fantastic. Um, I think it would be great for the area. But there are many people that don't want to see it turn into a Vegas well, and the I mean, excesses that's... of it. So where's the where, where does the limitations lie? Well, I, I think, you know, there's there's a uh, an old line from, I believe it's uh, the Gilbert and Sullivan operetta, Iolanthe. Uh, if everybody's somebody, then no one's every then no one's anybody. Right. And so, you know, if, if gambling is everywhere, which is probably, you know, the way it, it should be, uh, it really does take away that sort of economic benefit that's like you, you understand this it's, it's the whole concept of economics of prohibition if it's right. only in a couple of different places that you know those areas that have it benefit from it uh, if it gets equalized then yes the economic benefits are distributed equally but then you know again nobody so nobody can sort of claim that this is going to be a massive massive boom I'm actually very interested to see how this works in my home state of Maryland because they've gone to casino slots uh, they may very well go to uh, uh, table games at some point in time because you've got places like Delaware and Pennsylvania that allow them in certain locales. Uh, and I don't know sort of what the total economic benefit is going to be. Of course, for us, the benefit is we're so much closer to Virginia, which I can't foresee allowing casino gaming right. anywhere anytime soon. So, you know, it, it, it really all depends on, on that side of it. I mean, for me, you know, as I, as I said last night, the only fundamental problem I have with Vegas is that everything's so damn spread apart. So you, know, you just, just got to get everywhere. I mean, it's like, I, you know, I love... I love the excess that is New Orleans, where you yes, you can walk around on the street drinking, and you you know you see all sorts of things going on. You got great music, great food, but everything is is in like a three square block, right. square block area. So you know you're not you're not uh, sort of hoofing it in the heat. Now maybe a wetter, more humid heat down there, and certainly smellier. But you know when you get above 104 degrees, that whole dry heat, wet heat stuff yeah, it doesn't we, matter. Yeah, yeah. Well, then again, you're from Tucson, so you get this. No, yeah, you, you hit 104, 105, and anything I, I, above that, it's just think, whatever. I don't think I talked to you when, when I when I came down to the anniversary show, and thank you again for having me. Uh, I made the fundamental tactical error of renting a convertible. Yeah, and that was driving, a, yes. I don't know what you were thinking. I was I was thinking, hey. It's the spring, and no. I can't do this, and I no longer have my convertible at home. Yeah. And then I drove to uh, from Phoenix to Tucson in a convertible, and it was not pleasant. Yeah, it was. The, you created the world's biggest blow dryer right in your face yes. for about an hour and a half. That's what exactly you did. right. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. 
brutal. And, and uh, with the added benefit of, of, God forbid, something can happen, and I couldn't stop on the way because you and Katie Pavlich and everybody saying, don't stop on the interstate between Phoenix and Tucson. It is a bad idea. 751-1041 is, uh, is the phone number. You know, the, the, the uh, talking about, it's, a, it's an interesting concept that if we opened it up, the gambling to everywhere, you know, you, you, you kind of, you, you oversaturate, but then it ends up settling down because it is available everywhere. It reminds me of, of sort of locally in Tucson where we get these, uh, we get these ridiculous sign or, ordinances, sure. right? And you see the, you see the, you see the, the, the lower income areas really go overboard on these, on these, on the signs and everything else. And that's where they normally these, sure. these spring forward from, but in these sort of more middle-class affluent areas, they don't. And I'm a firm believer that if you, if you drop those restrictions, you'll end up in a circumstance where the, the, those, those types of things will even out in the end Absolutely because they, they will, they will play to their market base and they're, you're not going to see these big banners going up at a, at a La Encantada Plaza, which is a really yeah. nice plaza in, in, in the, on the north side of Tucson. It, they'll, they'll self-regulate well, themselves. And here's, and here's the thing. I, I come down on, in, in times like these where the, you know, the economy is in indulgence, and you, you really do need to err on the side of letting the businesses themselves figure out the best way to bring their customers in. I mean, that, to them, that's what drives their market. Right. I, I got, I, I got uh, uh, just completely frustrated with my little town uh, where I live in Maryland, where um, we had a new restaurant that opened up, and then we only have a handful of restaurants. Now. We're a town of 4,500 people, a uh, farming community. And the first day that they were open, the local zoning inspector comes by and finds them for having one or two too many signs out front. Oh. And it's like, you know, it's like, welcome to, welcome to Centerville, Maryland. Uh, you know, here's, here's your, here's your, 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 your greeting. Uh, here's your ASX ticket. Yeah. Dollars. I, you know, you got it. You got to go. That's one of the reasons why I love the stuff that the Institute for Justice does. And I don't know how often you have guys from there on your show. You really need to, because they do fantastic work on this. Uh, you know, sign ordinances, uh, you know the, the bagel shop that's sort of somehow situated behind a strip mall, and they, you know they need to be able to advertise out front, and you know they huh. fight successfully for the, for these things. Uh, the, one of the, one of my favorite stories was not on signs, but on uh, uh, towns that uh, had forbidden you from putting a for sale sign on your used car. Okay. And uh, and so somebody, well, yeah, that's exactly right. So he had the sign, and he said that he, his sign was, "This car is not for sale." For more information, call. Oh, brilliant! And so yeah. the yeah. town went after him. And said, no, no, car's not for sale. It's not for sale. I'm going to say, yeah. And and uh, and IJ, uh, I believe they successfully won that one. But they're always fighting that for for economic. It's like uh, the Jurassic Park and Jeff, Jeff Goldblum. You know, nature will always find a way. Yes, that's exactly right. Seven five seven five one one zero four one is the phone number. All right, more with Andrew Langer uh, coming up. We are live from the American First Prosperity right online convention going on here in Las Vegas. Take your phone calls as well, 751-1041. It's 1041 The Truth, Tucson's News Talk FM.